Okay, so we are here today to talk about thermochemical equations as we start our study of thermochemistry, all right? And in order to get through this particular session, you are going to need a periodic table and a calculator, so make sure you have those handy. All right, now our objectives for what we want to accomplish today, I want to review the sign conventions for enthalpy. And you might remember that enthalpy is given the symbol H. We usually talk about changes in enthalpy, so we're usually talking about delta H. All right. um, we're going to review thermochemical equations, what they are, and some ways to manipulate them, because that's going to come in handy later in the unit. And we're going to do a practice problem, which actually will occur in two steps. Are we good? All right. Now, um, one thing I want to point out about enthalpy, it is a state function. Um, that means that it doesn't matter how you got there, just the change in what you were before versus what you are now. All right, so when we talk about enthalpy, or delta H, we're talking about sort of the final minus the initial enthalpy. All right, you're going to see these kinds of setups a lot, especially in this unit, where it's final minus initial always to find the difference. All right, um, and so the sign does become important. All right. Are we good? Is it final minus initial? We're going to use that a lot in this chapter. All right. Now, as you know, energy is neither created nor destroyed. All right. I'm not going to gain it or lose it. The energy of the universe is a constant. So what this means for us is that if the system loses energy, the energy must be gained by the surroundings. Just to review, when I, when I talk about system, I mean the part of the universe I'm paying attention to. It might be the reactants in a chemical reaction. Right. And the surroundings would be everything else. If you are doing your reaction in an aqueous system, the water and the styrofoam cup might be your surroundings. All right. So that's what I'm showing in these pictures down below. Energy can be lost to the surroundings, all right? Where you go from where your final en energy is is less than your initial energy, all right? Or energy can be gained from the surroundings and the final energy would be greater than the initial energy. Right. So we can have these two different <coughs> situations. Are we clear on that? Good. All right, so. If the energy, if the system absorbs energy from the surroundings, the process is considered to be endothermic, like an endoskeleton, it's inside, all right? And the delta H for this is positive. The sign for delta H is relative to the system. So if the energy is going into the system, that's a positive change. Right? It's all relative to the system. I just want to review this sign convention because it will show up a lot this year. Are we good? You can include the little diagram if that helps you. You, know, you might notice this is from our textbook. Are we good? Can I go on? All right. And the opposite situation. Uh, if the system releases energy to the surroundings, the process is exothermic. And the, the delta H, the enthalpy change, is <coughs> negative. Because the energy is leaving the system, that's considered to be a negative delta H. Because the system is going down in energy. Are we okay? So I just wanted to review those terms because they are very important. All right. Let's go on and start talking about thermochemical equations. All right. What I mean by a thermochemical equation is that it's a balanced chemical equation, just like we're always used to. 
but it explicitly shows the amount of heat involved. Here's an example. All right. Four ions react with three oxygens to form two Fe2O3. And the delta H is negative. What does that tell us about this reaction? It's exothermic. We can think of this then as energy as, as having energy as a product. It's not really a product because it, you know, we can't write a chemical formula. But we can think of the energy as belonging on the product side of the equation. Are we good? Another thing I wanted to point out about exothermic or thermochemical equations is that if you <coughs> multiply everything in the reaction through by some coefficient, you have to do the same thing to the energy term, to that delta H term, because enthalpy is an extensive property. All right, so the more iron you react, the more energy is going to be released. All right, so this was the reaction I just gave you. Same reaction. All right. If I, ah, sorry, went too, went too soon. If I multiply everything by three, all right, say I have tripled the amount of iron reacting, all right, so I have 12 moles of iron with nine moles of oxygen, all right, I have to do the same thing to delta H. So I'm that the energy change would be 4,956 kilojoules. If I triple the reaction, if I scale it up by three. I'm just pointing this out to you because this is going to be very handy later in this unit. Another thing we can do with thermochemical equations, you might recall, we can turn them around and reverse them. All right. If you write the reaction, reactants as products and the products as reactants, the sign of delta H will change. But its magnitude remains the same. Because if you had an exothermic reaction before, you've now written as an endothermic process and vice versa. So again, this is going to be relevant later in the unit, and I'm just mentioning it to you now because I can. All right. So if I take that same reaction we were working with and turn it around, you'll notice that the sign has changed. <coughs> okay. Are we good? Derek. No, in this particular process, now that it's right, now that it's an endothermic process as written, you could think of the energy as a reactant. But you would step it on the right. If you're pulling it out and writing the delta H term, you know, off to the side like this with you know equals to whatever, yeah, you just put it on the right hand side of the equation. But what we're really saying here is the energy is is in essence a reactant in the equation. Not that we can write a formula for it, but it belongs on the left-hand side if we were to include it explicitly in the equation. All right, let's look at some problems. All right. How much heat would be evolved if 46 grams of iron 3 oxide reacts completely according to the equation below? As what kind of problem is this? Uh, Endo. It's endothermic reaction, but what kind of process will we use to solve it? Stoichiometry, factor label. All right, so we will say x kilojoules equals 46 grams of Fe2O3. So I need to go from grams to moles. What will I use to do that? The GFM, molar mass, which is 159.7 grams per mole of Fe2O3. Yes? All right. And then I know from the balanced equation that for every two moles of Fe2O3, that 1652 kilojoules are released. I've got that positive sign. My answer should include the sign in that sign convention. And when I do that out, so I did it out, and I have 237 kilojoules. How many sig figs am I allowed in my answer? Two. Two. So I have to record that as 240 kilojoules. Are we good? 